Jeff just spoke to you about having a vision, about having a dream. Um, the previous speaker talked about the energy of youth. Very relevant things. I'm going to talk to you about being wrong. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about how being wrong failures are a critical ingredient of being successful. And that hopefully all of us can relate to. Let me start with myself. Um, I'm a failed physicist. That's how I started my career. Then I became a failed consultant. Then I became a failed entrepreneur. And now I'm trying to be hopefully not be a failed entrepreneur. Let's move from there. Um, you guys know this. I, I love him because I love his quotes because they have lots of deep meaning behind it. And this one says, a person who never made a mistake never tried anything new. And there's a lot of truth in that. Uh, the previous speaker also spoke about it. You have to try new things. Yeah, it's critical you try new things. Failure will be a part of it. And the question is, how do you separate the two? So everybody talks about entrepreneurship. So what does it mean to be an entrepreneur? Everybody opens up MBA books. Everybody's on the internet. And you see three things. You need ideas. You need capital. And you need execution. Everybody knows this, right? Does anybody in this room not know this? Anybody, put your hand up. Who knows it? Show of hands. Right? So, why aren't you all entrepreneurs? <laughs> right? That's the question. And I, I struggle with that very, very often. Yeah? I struggle with that question. So I thought, let me try and break this down for you. Ideas must reflect why you do something. And to have ideas, you must have vision. There are lots of visionaries. You have the Oracle here. On all the way to recently, you have Steve Jobs, right? Huge visions. But remember one thing about visions. A vision seen by one person is a hallucination. <laughs> yeah? You must learn to share the idea. Because sharing the idea creates a sense of trust. It's interesting, because we have this thing about how precious ideas are, how you should keep it to yourself. And the previous speaker just also said, you have to share the idea. Because sharing the idea builds trust. And there are two things um, which I would like. I, I, I actually edited this so that all of you could read it. But as you've seen, it's gone a bit haywire. But hopefully the message comes out. <laughs> um, there's one thing I've learned throughout my career as an entrepreneur, if I could say that, is that you don't do new things in new places. You either do an old thing in a new place, or in a new place you do an old thing, but never both simultaneously. That's the land of the unknown. <laughs> and then capital. What is capital? Capital is money. Yeah? You need money. You need ideas and you need money to make this thing happen. Right? But the funny part is, the best place to find money is close to home. If your mother doesn't believe you, if your brother doesn't believe you, if your friends don't believe you, there's something wrong. It doesn't necessarily mean the idea is bad. It doesn't necessarily mean you cannot do it. It simply means you cannot do it by yourself. You need to create a team. You need to build trust. And you need to think about the total amount of money you put to work. Lots of people will come out with interesting things. You know, this is the capital. This is the equity we put in. You hear those terms, right? And this is the debt. Just return on equity. That's what we're looking for. Forget about it. Think about the total amount of money you're going to put to work. The key to it is you allocate value up front. Because there's always, always, always a fight for value. Right? Who's going to get what? The guy with the idea thinks, it's all mine. The guy with the money thinks, without money, you can't do this. The execution thinks, good for you. <laughs> right? But if I don't execute, you have no value. Traditionally, the way it works, it's 30%, 30%, 30%, 30% 10 and 10% loose. Yeah? So don't be greedy. Learn to give value up, because it creates a lot more value. The most interesting part about capital is people fund people. Nobody I know has ever funded an idea, including myself. I have invested in a few things, but I have never invested in an idea. 
You invest in people. Execution, the third piece of the puzzle, right? It's all about creating the right team. You cannot do it on your own, no matter how good you are. And I'll tell you why in a second. You might be brilliant at what you do, but you can never do it alone. The second piece of the puzzle, document all your processes. It's hard, you know, because it's in your head, right? It's clear. But if you're going to share it, you need to document it. Once you document it and you share it, you go a step further. Building a team, everybody says, I'm the boss, and these are my guys, right? <laughs> That's the team. Everybody goes, do I report into you? It's really about empowering. Yeah. The people you take on as a teammate, you have to learn to trust them. You have to empower them to make decisions. Because you will never have all the information. No matter how hard you look around you, you will never, ever have all the information. And you can keep delaying decisions till the end of time. It's very easy. Make a decision. If it's wrong, correct it. But make the decision. And John Rain, our CFO, often says to us, whatever we do, it happens to be a business. Right? It's a business. It happens to be insurance. It happens to be a bakery. Think of it always in terms of a business. The principles of business are the same. The last point I learned in India. You know, everybody's talking about how do, we, how do we go past these hurdles. You think of a running race, you're running fast, you see the hurdle, you calculate the number of steps you take, you jump over it, and then suddenly there's the next one in front of you. You're again mentally adjusting. You should never jump hurdles. Just go past them. Much easier. The key to all of this is passion. Right? And, and somebody gave me, Jeff actually gave me an interesting definition of passion yesterday. He said, passion is what you're willing to give up in order to make it happen. That was interesting. What are you willing to give up to make it happen? It's not about what you're going to do. It's not about your drive. But it's what you're willing to give up. Because that's often a far, far bigger question. Throughout all of this, Throughout all these constraints, you need to be able to allocate resources, and you need structure. People always question, what is, you know, how do you allocate resources? It must be top-down. It must go from your vision strategy. It must drive your people, who must drive your processes, who must drive any underpinning technology there is with it. But it must be top-down. You cannot decide to start somewhere in between and go with it. There's, of course, creativity. I, I'm, I'm trying, I'm jamming in a lot, so I do apologize. There's creativity and there's structure. People think if you are completely unstructured and completely chaotic, you're creative, and hence you create value. The others who believe, if you're completely structured, you, know, you might not be creative, but you'll at least be profitable. But the most interesting part is when you have a startup, when you're starting up, you need two sets of people. You need some who will play one single role in your team. They hold the fort down. And you need others who play multiple roles. So, have I failed? Yes is the answer. <laughs> you see the list in front of you. This is a very small list of the things I did in order to get to where I am today. Failing. And these are all which have failed. They've completely bombed in Jeff's words. <laughs> yeah? I started DAS Artifacts at the age of 16. Um, it was about importing statues from India all the way to Europe. I thought if you find the best statues in the world and you import them to Europe, somebody will buy them. I completely forgot about regulations. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, you know what? If I figure out the regulations, I can bring silk into it. Right? Silk. Beautiful silk. I forgot that the Dutch people were not ready for silk. <laughs> then I thought, how about a high-end Indian restaurant? I, the, the next one is funny. Ordering in. We thought, you know what, internet's there, people will want to order food in, right? You guys do it today. But this was 12 years ago when you couldn't click through. Yeah? I could make people order, but make no money off it, <laughs> right?
right? I was making money for everybody else but me. Um, Jello Canada was, we, we noticed that Canada is an immigration country. Lots of people, lots of Indians going into Canada. We thought, well, if you go into a new country, you offer them services. And then suddenly we started working out the logistics behind offering the services, and we just put our hands up. It was too difficult. The latest one was a technology incubator where we took some of the best and greatest technologies you could find on this planet. Ideas galore, teams capable of execution. Wrong timing. We couldn't get access to capital. This was 2008. But the question became, becomes, where have I succeeded? This is Iris Sundra. We're building a complete ecosystem of delivering quality health care to the low end of India, where you can do a hip replacement for 1,500 euros. No change in quality. We, we will use striker hips. We're, going, we're putting up a cardiac center where you have no change in the valves. The doctors are just as good. And we're building a complete ecosystem. While building this ecosystem, there are lots of people who say, you can't do it. And you know what I say to them? That means one more person in front of me who will not do it. We went cash flow positive within six months. Right? This, most healthcare systems take up to two years. The next one, 21st century, it's a state of the art, one of its kind, completely comprehensive IT system which takes the complete medical healthcare records in, into play. Right? End to end. And they said, well, who's going to buy this? Guess what? Everybody's buying it. Right? We've got people to understand that when you have an integrated, seamless system, you can bring down cost. The last one which I'm developing right now is Zixana. It's a platform which allows universities access to students and students access to universities anywhere in the world. Interesting, huh? But the great part of this, it actually, the way we do it, is that we allow for students to chase their curiosities. Because when you're studying, usually, you take out a lot of books, lots of papers. You're not thinking about, how do I open up a book, right? Which book do I go to? Which paper do I go to? So what this does, it will allow you, as a student, to chase your curiosity from any university in the world. So my passion, what drives me? My passion is that affordability is the process of inclusivity. That really is how and it's why I do it. To include the bigger people. To let a bigger, a bigger percentage of the people, to let them in. Our vision is our passion. How, what, uh, what do we do? We re engineer processes. We re engineer processes so that we can make decisions. We allow people to make decisions better for themselves, as well as allowing for customers and clients to make decisions better. And how do we do it? We do it by empowering our people to accept failures. So if you're successful or if you fail, there's two sides of the same coin. You shouldn't get excited <laughs> if you're a true entrepreneur. Right? So we said execution can fail. OK? Ideas can fail. OK. Capital can fail. So what is an entrepreneur? That's the question, right? Because these were all your constraints. Entrepreneur has passion. An entrepreneur builds trust. An entrepreneur has creativity. Everything else around you can fail. Everything. But you cannot fail. That's the belief you have to go with. You have to separate the fact you have ideas, ability to execute, and money, and yourself. And when you cannot fail, you become an entrepreneur. Thank you.